Welcome to a camp tour of our most luxurious camp in Botswana. Oh my gosh, the monkey! <laughs> Now, I'm actually stood in front of the reserve bedrooms because this is the open air camp and it's really cool. So I figured you guys would like to have a little tour around. So the clue is in the name, open air. We are completely out in the elements. Where I'm stood now is actually unfenced. So any animals can come into this bit. There have been sightings of some of the uh, more dangerous animals as well as some of the cute ones that we know and love, but it's fine because once we step behind this fence known as the khotla, which is very traditional here in Botswana, it's made from leadwood and it has actually been used as the courts here in Botswana, but it also creates a perfect barrier for animals. So it's super cool. We're literally sleeping inside here. So let me show you around. Okay, so let's start in the master bedroom. This is mine and Pete's bed quite close to the huddler there, which I thought was absolutely fine until I was told that there are quite a few scorpions. So I might be inching my bed a little bit more forward. You can see we've not got much in the way of storage. So all of our luggage is just to the side here. We've got some nice towels on the bed as well. And of course, our essentials on our bedside table. You've always got to have your riding hat to hand in the middle of the night. We have got to be really careful with all of our belongings because in the Mishatu tree, it's a family of monkeys who are prone to being really naughty and stealing things. So all of our camera equipment is zipped up safely in a tent, but things like my bum bag and stuff at night, I'm gonna have to make sure is completely packed away. Even things like sun cream. There was actually an occasion when a monkey stole an iPhone and the only way they could get it to drop it was to ring it. And then when it vibrated, the monkey was like, ah, what was that? So, the bedroom, you can see it's a little bit communal. We are actually all inside the fencing, obviously, to stay safe. So we are camping close and personal with our other fellow campers. But I'm about to show you my favorite bit. Of course, it's super duper hot in Botswana, so we need to keep hydrated. And we actually have the first ever tree tap that I've seen. So nice and easy to fill up my bottle. I was quite surprised to learn that all of the water in South Africa and Botswana on our camps has been fine to drink straight from the tap because they're all boreholes. So it's super fresh, great water. And I can officially say this is the first time I've ever filled up a water bottle from a tree. So next is our little communal area around the fire pit. Love Island style, this is where We'll talk about all the drama in our squeaky chairs. It's been really nice just sitting and chilling with everyone. Obviously, there is limited signal. We have got a slightly funny background of the boss snoring now. It has been a long day. We've ridden for five hours this morning. So I'm sure we will all enjoy having a nice drink around the fire tonight. Then we have the kitchen area. So we've just had our lunch here. This is kept under this little tent. Now that is for a reason. Remember the monkeys I mentioned earlier, they are also prone to going to the toilet. So we keep all of the food and stuff nice and hygienic under here. It does however mean that when it comes to us going to bed, potentially we could be under a monkey going to the loo. Hopefully not. I mean, my bed, my bed, our bed is actually in quite a good spot because it's not under a big branch. Simon, on the other hand, not so much. It's a bit dodgy. Good luck. Right, it's this way to the bathroom. So this is our little Hotler Avenue. Now, this is basically to keep us safe when we go to the bathroom at night. So I've just walked past the gate this is actually where we go out to get to the showers and to get to the horses, but we are under super strict rules that as soon as it's dark and as soon as the guides have kind of gone to bed and they're essentially kind of off duty, 
we are not allowed to go out of here. So that'll be pop popped up and we can just use this one bathroom here. Obviously that is because of the animals. Apparently there's been times where the lions come and sleep here and they almost like lean up against the fence. So personally, I think I'm gonna try and like hold going to the bathroom if I can during the night, because even with the hotler here, it still seems a little bit risky. Anyway, the toilet is just behind Pete there. I don't really think we need to see that, but let's hop out here and go and have a look at the showers. Our kind of ensuite bathrooms, just with a little bit of a walk. So, got our big shower here, obviously got a sink and basin and everything. We've got our super secure rope that comes across to let people know you're in here. There are four showers, so there shouldn't be too much fighting. Obviously, because it's so communal in there, this will also act as like a bit of a changing room. Now, I was a bit skeptical as to whether there would be any hot water here, but I can assure you they have thought of that. There are hot showers and I'm gonna show you how we get that. And we have hot water. So this is a little log burner. I don't know the ins and outs, guys, of how it works, but essentially, if we make a little fire in here, we can get hot running water. However, as I mentioned, it is super duper hot, so I'm actually really ready for a cold shower. Now, the most exciting bit, which I think you are all gonna enjoy, is the horse area. I know there's gonna be people wondering about how we keep the horses protected, because obviously we're inside the hotler. So let me take you through that and go and show you the ponies. So this is the horsey paddock. Nice big area for them all so they can keep walking around after they've been their long rides in the morning. Super shady. You can see all of the horses behind me having their afternoon supper. They've also got loads of very delicious looking hay nets dotted about so that there's no squabbles for forage or anything like that. So the way that we keep the horses safe from the predators, which are literally just the other side of this fence. Remember guys, we're in the Mashatu game reserve, so there are wild animals everywhere. There's literally no fences. They can go to Zimbabwe if they fancy it. So we do have to take extra precautions to keep the horses safe. And one of those is the lion netting. So all around the fencing, there is this kind of netting, which looks like it would not deter a lion at all. But weirdly, lions see it as like a really physical barrier. They can't see through it and they don't think that they can get through it. So that is one way we keep the horses safe. The other way is that the amazing staff and guides here are actually on a rotor all throughout the night. So they take it in turns to stay up for an hour with the horses and they essentially just keep watch to make sure that if any lions or predators come in, everyone can be alarmed and they can use the bull whips to make a nice big cracking sound, which scares the lions off. So let's go and have a little wander over to the horses because I can see Smokey enjoying his supper. We went for such a nice ride this morning. It was quite a long one. There was lots of kind of rocky mountainous terrain to go over. And then we came past the most gorgeous big rock formations. Smokey was just an absolute superstar as he always is. Last bit of the horsey area to show you is the tack room. Now, obviously we are very remote right now. Oh my gosh, the monkey. <laughs> the monkeys are going a bit crazy because they love the horse feed. We literally just saw a monkey stealing food out of the buckets. The horses are so sweet with them. As I was saying, we're in a very remote area, so there is no worry of tack getting stolen or anything like that. So it's all out on our log here. Everything is very organized. When we arrive back, we untack the horses super quickly. They all get washed off. And then we have to arrange our tack like so. So we've got our saddles underneath and then we pop our kind of saddle pads on top and then our sweat pads all has to be facing upwards so that it can dry out in the sun and it's nice to put on the horse's backs tomorrow. We then have to clear out anything in our kind of saddle bag that you know we need for the night. I tend to keep like my sun cream, my sunglasses in there and pop our bridle on top so that we know whose tack is whose. And then it's as simple as that. It just stays there and it'll be there in the morning.
nice short walk from the horses to the kitchen which is good because I love a snack. So this is where all of our delicious meals get made. Again, inside a huddler to keep all of the amazing staff safe. Apparently there have been instances of hyenas being very close to the kitchen. Obviously they're a bit like scavengy nature, so they love being close to there because they also love a snack. Right, we can then head back inside the camp now and we've done a full circle of the entire area. This is our open air camp, but obviously the proof is in the pudding as to how well we sleep. So I'm gonna catch up with you guys in the morning to see what my first night was like here. See if we have any encounters with elephants or hyenas or lions and see if the uh, noisy wildlife keeps us up all night. See you in the morning. Happy campers. All survived? It's totally survived. How did you like your uh, your bush night? Well, it's the most rustic camp we've been in, isn't it? Definitely, definitely, <laughs> by, um, by a long way. But I, which I really liked, I really liked that. It was really nice. I Once I got over the bugs, had a mild panic about the scorpions. I actually slept the fact really we had, well. We had a tour of all the scorpions that were in the fencing that we were sleeping next to. I really didn't find that helpful. <laughs> But I took confidence in the fact that these guys found it all very amusing and it was all great and they, yeah. were, and they were sleeping there too, so it, yeah, surely true. it was going to be okay. They weren't like, okay, we're off. No, I was actually surprised. And there weren't too many scary animal sounds, or at least I didn't find them scary. No, not at all. I, I, I felt quite gonna, safe. I felt, thought that we were going to hear a lot more through the night. Same. Actually. Well, same, I was so, I was like fast asleep. I was absolutely zonked. <laughs> it was out for the count. But I've also taken a lot of confidence from like Max and the team and mm. knowing that we are looked after and safe. They're like the most important part of this, I think, for me. Yeah, oh God, 100%. Obviously, yeah. No offence, Simon, I would not have wanted to camp in there with like just, <laughs> just us, us guys. Uh -uh. I mean, you imagine? out of there. I definitely wouldn't there. have slept. Oh God, no, absolutely not. No, was, I quite liked our little wake up call this morning as well. Yeah. Lovely lady coming in and singing to us. Anyway, this is a bit out of context because we're now in a completely different location with a full English breakfast on our laps. And that's because we've had the most sort of crazy morning. So we got up before breakfast, didn't we? Hence why we couldn't film this morning because it was still a bit dusky and dark. And then we've ridden over here. We've had a little race. We, well, first of all, we picked up some lion tracks. <laughs> which I got very excited I was about. gonna mention the lions, Sorry. don't you worry. <laughs> Go on, Simon, you tell me about the lions because you love the lions. I got really excited about it because we picked up some fresh tracks and so we kind of reached our way to where sometimes they like to spend time. And it was such a privilege to be able to go there because mm. It's so beautiful, but you'd never get there in a vehicle because it was no, all, it's no, also no, kind no. of enclosed. Tiny little tracks, really and, pretty though. And be really beautiful. And we could ride through and see, and we were obviously like getting quite excited that there might be a lion there, but th we didn't actually see one this time. I reckon he might have been in there just watching us, just Probably. like. <laughs> there goes my girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had a little race, which might be in this vlog, might be a different one. So we won't disclose who won that. No, but we're it was ending. very close, of course. It was very close, it was very close. Um, we're ending with a rustic breakfast to follow up our rustic night. So we're in the middle of the bush now, right by the river. And right by the river, which we took the horses down to go and have a drink, which I, I haven't had that much anxiety about this trip, but that was, I felt quite yeah, anxious Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smokey went to go in because it's like, oh, I'm hot after racing. I was like, uh-uh, sunshine. <laughs> this is literally <laughs> Crockville right now. We're not going in there. And we've just left the horses um, with the guys who are looking after them, which is amazing. And we said, oh, should we let the girths out? And they're like, actually, don't let the girths out because you might need to get on quick. Could be a lion. Which is so it just slightly comes scary as well. It's slightly scary. I'm also going to really enjoy my breakfast. It's like amazing. Full, that the full English breakfast in the middle of, us, yeah. literally in the middle with of nowhere. With freshly cooked eggs. Like this has been cooked here. Absolutely wild. So, so lucky. Anyway, that is a little tour of our rustic camp and a bit of an insight into how we're spending our days here in Botswana. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Live, love, love you. Let's dig in. Yeah, let's. Cheers. Oh, what are you going for first? Um, I'm oh going for a bit of egg. No, egg, definitely. Definitely a bit of egg. <laughs> 